Hi friends, welcome back. In the last few chapters of Static Timing Analysis series, we studied about what is Static Timing Analysis and why do we need Static Timing Analysis in VLSI Digital Designs. And there we saw, and there we saw that what are all timing paths in which a STA tool will break down your designs and it will perform the timing checks. So we also saw that what is a timing arc and what are all the characteristics of a timing arc. So in this particular video, we are going to cover everything about clocks. So if you would like to know anything about timing paths or what is timing arc or what are all the characteristics of a timing or please go through the previous video uh, of this static timing analysis series. I have provided the link in the description section. So let's get started in this video where we are going to cover each and everything about the clocks. So we are going to cover from basics of what is a clock to what are all the clock, pro pro clock properties which needs to be taken care while doing the static timing analysis of a digital design. So let's get started. So what is a clock? We will start from the definition of the clock. So a clock is nothing but a periodic signal which is used in sequential circuits to synchronize the data transfer between different sequential elements like flip-flops. And the clocks are basically generated either by external crystal oscillator which is sitting outside of a chip or by chip internal RC oscillators or PLS. So if you see here, this is our clock signal and we have here from rising edge, first rising edge to second rising edge, this is our cycle clock cycle first, then from second rising edge to third rising edge, this is our clock cycle two and so on. This is nothing here but the pulse width of a clock signal and the duration between first rising edge to the second rising edge is nothing but our clock period. So an important point to note here is the STA tool times the timing paths in relation to a clock. So in the last previous chapter we we studied about the timing paths. The delay for each and every timing path actually need to meet the timing checks within one clock cycle period. We are going to cover all those this uh, all the all, all the timing checks. What are all the timing checks? Synchronous timing checks. Uh, the ST tool uh, performs and how it performs and what are the conditions for violations and what are the conditions for meeting a uh, timing we are going to cover in our next chapters. So for now just remember that the ST tool times each and every timing path within a one clock cycle period. So this is the goal for the ST tool to check. Now let's see how the clock propagation happens in our design. So here you can see that this is our clock port. So this can be a uh, external crystal oscillator pin or it can be a internal PLL pin or a RC uh, oscillator internal uh, own chip RC oscillator pin as well. So from this clock pin we will have some uh, drive strength booster which will basically boost the drive strength of the clock signal. Then we will have few repeaters and we will have some buffers and then the output of these buffers will go to flip-flops or each sequential element present in the design. Okay, so this kind of design, this kind of flip-flop, uh, this kind of buffer structure actually is called nothing but clock tree. And why do we need this clock tree? So if you see here, if the clock signal directly goes and connect to each and every flip-flops due to the interconnect delays, the signal rise time or the signal here is nothing but the clock signal, the rise time and fold times is going to be increased. Okay, so in order to maintain the clock signal integrity or in order to maintain the clock signal 
almost equal to its ideal clock signal, we need to insert these buffers to increase the drive strength of the signal. Okay, and this kind of structure where we have the drive boosters and repeaters and these buffers, we need we, we call this kind of structure as a clock tree. So hope this is clear. Now the ST tool actually the clock propagations in the STA tool can be modeled in two ways which one is ideal mode and second is propagated mode okay so when we do not have the buffers inserted in our design and we want to perform the ST analysis we have to model the buffer behavior and STA tool will use that modeled behavior and it will perform the timing analysis so in the absence of clock buffers in the design the clock propagation is nothing but called ideal mode clock propagation when we have the physical buffers inserted in our designs we do not need to model any behaviors for the sta tool and the sta tool replace, replaces the model clock information or the clock behavior with the actual clock information so this is called propagated mode so just always remember that when whenever there is no buffer or clock tree inserted in the designs the clock propagation in that particular mode is called ideal mode clock propagation and when we have the buffers inserted in our design it is called propagated mode of clock propagation so hope this is clear now let's see the next property of the clock which is very important and it is called clock latency so what is clock latency so the clock latency is nothing but time taken by a clock signal to propagate from the clock definition point to a flip-flop clock pin and it is also no, known as insertion delay so in the previous uh, slides where we saw this is the clock definition point so when the clock signal travels from here to the clock pin of a particular flip-flop so here there are loads of flip-flops sitting here so the delay between this clock definition point to the flip-flop clock pin is called nothing but clock latency okay now there are two types of clock latency the clock latency is actually divided into two parts one one is source latency and one is network latency so the source latency is nothing but the latency between clock source or clock definition point to the clock port in a given design we will see in details in the next slide with the circuit diagram for now just remember that the source latency is nothing but the clock the delay between the clock definition point to the clock port of our design what is network latency the network latency is nothing but the delay or the latency from the clock port of our design to the actual flip flop clock pin which is basically occurs due to the clock tree insertion so now let's see here using the circuit diagram and uh, go to the waveform so suppose this is our design this is square is nothing but our design and this is the clock port of our design okay and now assume that we have an external crystal oscillator which is supplying clock to our design so this is nothing but our clock source so the latency from this clock source to the clock definition point of our design no, to the clock port of our design this is nothing but called source latency so let's see the source less latency is nothing but x nanosecond let's assume the unit is nanosecond so the source latency is nothing but x uh, nanosecond now once the clock is available at the clock port of our design the clock signal has to travel from there to each of the sequential elements in our design okay so 
Th th these are the sequential elements. So the dish from here, clock port to the clock pin is called nothing but network latency. And this is coming because of the buffers inserted as a part of our clock tree. So this is called network latency. Assume it is Y nanosecond. So if you see the waveforms, this is our ideal clock. So this is generated from the clock source. Okay. Now when this clock basically reaches at the clock fin of the flip flops, this clock will basically getting shifted by X plus Y nanosecond. So this X here is nothing but the source latency and the Y is nothing but the network latency. So the total latency here for the clock signal is nothing but X plus Y. So hope this latency is very much clear to you. Now let's see the next property of a clock signal which is clock slope. So if you remember in our last chapter we studied about the slew in general. What is slew in general? So the slew is nothing but rate of change of transition of a signal. So when the signal transitions from low to high or high to low, the rate at which it, the transition happens is called nothing but the slew. So, he, so here we are going to see the slew for the clock signal and we will call it as a clock slew. Or it is also called the transition time. So if you see here, this is our ideal clock, okay, but the, the, this is the ideal clock, but there is nothing like ideal in the practical design. So there will be some rising time and there will be some falling time. So the rising time, so the rising rate at which the clock signal transition from low to high here is nothing but called the rising slew and here when it transitions from high to low is nothing but falling slew. So in ideal mode, this is our ideal clock, but this is our propagated mode or you can say it as a practical uh, in, in the practical scenario. So in ideal mode, when we are doing the static timing analysis in ideal mode, in that case, the clock slew we have to model so that it can be read by the STA tool to perform the timing analysis. But in propagated mode, when we have our buffers and everything inserted into the designs, we do not have to model any such information and the ST tool will automatically calculate it, and calculate it um, after the clock buffers are inserted to the design during play center. So this is the clock slew, this is the slew property of a clock signal. So hope this is clear. Now let's see one another important property of the clock which is clock uncertainty. So clock uncertainty is again part of two properties of a clock which is clock jitter and clock skew. This is skew in the previous slide we saw it was clock slew. So the clock slew and the clock skew are two different properties of a clock signal. Don't get please don't get confused here. So here we are going to see the clock uncertainty. So the clock uncertainty is nothing but again a combination of two clock pro properties which is clock jitter and clock skew. So let's first see the clock jitter. So clock, clock jitter is nothing but the variation in the time period or duty cycle of a clock signal. So due to the clock uh, generation circuitry there might be some variation in the clock period and duty cycle of a clock signal. This is called nothing but clock jitter. So if you see here, the solid line is our ideal clock, but as I said, there is nothing like ideal in the uh, real world. So the clock generator circuitry actually generates, the, there, there comes some kind of variations while uh, generating the clock signal. So if you see here the dotted line, here uh, this dotted line, so here you can see that the time period is not exactly matching the ideal clock. So the variation in the time period is actually nothing but called clock jitter. Okay, so always remember clock jitter is related to the 
time period of a clock cycle. Now let's see what is clock skew. So if you see here, we have two flip flops and this is the clock pin. So this clock pin is supposed to go to both of the flip flops. So the clock pin is going to this flip flop here and now from here the clock pin will go to the second flip flop by some buffer. This buffer is inserted here. So now suppose this the, the rising edge for this flip flop is happening at timestamp zero. So this flip flop will get a rising edge clock at timestamp zero, but now this flip flop will get that rising edge at time zero plus some delta. So this delta is nothing but called clock skew. So the time is difference between here. Or the clock signal at flip flop one to the clock signal at flip flop two is called nothing but clock skew. So hope this is also clear to you very much. Now let's see. Here we saw that clock uncertainty is nothing but combination of two other properties, which is clock jitter plus clock skew. Now for set of, set of timing check don't worry we are going to cover this uh, timing checks in some of our next chapter so here just remember that during set of timing check we take the clock uncertainty as clock jitter plus worst clock skew this is what we take as a clock uncertainty worst clock skew here means the minimum clock skew value okay and for hold timing check hold timing check actually we take best clock skew we don't take the clock jitter value just remember that this clock jitter is related to the time period and this hold check basically doesn't depend on the time clock or on the time period so we don't take the clock jitter value but for the clock skew, we take the best value of the clock skew, that means the maximum clock skew value, which can be possible. So just remember these two conditions and the clock uncertainty, which is nothing but a combination of clock jitter plus clock skew. So here we are going to conclude our this video on clocks. Hope, I hope that I have covered almost all the properties of the clock signals which needs to be handled during the SD analysis. If you have any doubts, please write down in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like button and please do not forget to subscribe this channel and enable the notification so that you will notify it as soon as I update the next video on the static time analysis series. Thank you very much.